Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Get ready for some confusingly weird news to start things off. China's Center for Information and Industry Development once again has published a new list of its crypto ranking index, pushing Bitcoin two spots higher in its last report, China has released a new CCID, Global Public Blockchain Technology Assessment Index. Why such a long name? Who knows? This is the 15th assessment index that has been released to date and likely will be the last one the country will publish in 2019, logically as the year is just about over. The index has brought a number of changes from the last ranking of cryptocurrency blockchain projects, although this one still remains, the top one still remains EOS. EOS has been the top ranking project in the previously published indexes, indicating that China is still highly interested in this particular project, despite recent governance concerns. For those of you who want a bit of a, a backdrop to all of this, um, we have seen before in the past that as far as we know, allegedly China is not too happy with cryptocurrencies and that they themselves love blockchain. However, for some reason, the government nationalized ranking system that goes through the government itself releases cryptocurrency rankings just about every three to four months. And it remains confusing because it's like saying you don't like driving, but then you buy a Honda. That's a terrible way of saying it, but you understand exactly what I'm kind of getting at. You don't like it, but you still talk deeply about it. <clears throat> and... One of the speculations has been for a while, especially as they, the government, as a government associated list keeps publishing, that some of the coins at the top may be the ones that they favor. This is, of course, once again, all speculation, but you know, you, you, we, we know how the world works. However, the second spot on the list, which was previously occupied by Tron, now belongs to Ethereum. Meanwhile, Tron itself dropped to third place. Here's the actual list right here. It was actually published by Justin Sun. For those of you not looking at the screen, the top rankings of coins, cryptocurrencies from the Chinese government are <clears throat> number one is EOS, then it's Ethereum, Tron, Nulls, Lisk, Neo, Steam, BitShares, Bitcoin, Lumens, Nebulas, Waves, Zilliqa, and Quantum. <clears throat> While its creativity and basic tech sub-indexes remain largely the same, its applicability and total index dropped by around three points. Meanwhile, Ethereum's total index increased by around three points, which led to that two projects swapping places. Where's the other important part? Neo, Quantum... Coins added index, yada yada. China's Center for Information and Industry Development, or the CCID, is a research institution which operates under the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. One of its functions is to provide businesses, as well as the government, with various professional services such as research, certification, and alike. The institution also started providing global blockchain technology assessment index reports back in May of 2018. One of the main ideas has been and this was part of the speculative rise that we had around September, was that at some point, China would re-allow cryptocurrency trading within the country. As we know, ownership is legal, as is um, buying, selling, holding, and trading as long as it's over the counter. But people believed that at some point, there would be a list of coins that would be legal within the country, uh, that people would be legally allowed to use. This obviously did not happen this year. I guess the speculation is still kind of out there as to when or if we could ever see a situation where China reinstates cryptocurrency tradership within the country. Anyway, that's the list. Not much has really changed. Um, the speculation for a while was that I believe it was Tron, Neo, I want to say Quantum, Nebulos. There's, there's definitely a fourth coin amongst these coins that were believed to be favored by the Chinese government as they are air quote Chinese coins or have affiliations with China. Anyway, those are the rankings. Um, still very confusing as to why they continue to list these even though they go on public tirades telling people not to own cryptocurrencies. But uh, let's move on. Here's a very, very fascinating one. IOTA 
is working side by side with Dell Technologies and Linux in order to be able to measure trust and confidence in data that comes from a wide range of sources. The new initiative is known as Project Alvarium, and it will build the concept of a data confidence fabric or a DCF. According to a recent blog post released by the Linux Foundation, this project, this new project, will be working in order to facilitate intrinsic value and data applications in spinning heterogeneous systems of systems. Sure, why not? Dell Technologies is the firm that will place the seed investment and the other industry leaders such as IBM, ARM, IOTA, Ozisoft, Unisys, Mobile Edge X, among others, will be supporting the development of this project. The Trust Fabric is a framework that has been developed through a wide range of technologies that help increase trust in the whole data path. This makes it easy for AI modules to analyze the data and scale digital transformation initiatives. While we do not receive an enormous amount of news about IOTA, and even though IOTA's 24-hour, um, what's it called? volume continues to decrease or has not been doing as well as other coins iota constantly has very good partnerships under its wings uh i'm shocked especially when you talk about actual real world adoption or real world usage uh this is kind of it uh when we hear that they've partnered with three four five different um not transportation what are they called car makers and stuff like that to have their stuff integrated <clears throat> To have their information or blockchain or tangle integrated with like electricity systems and all this other stuff. And when, when, when you talk about actual usage, this is, this, is, this is pretty much it. Well, a lot of other coins talk about that the projects that they have. IOTA actually has these partnerships. Here's the actual blog post right here from the Linux Foundation. It says the project will be seeded by code from Dell Technologies with support from industry leaders ARM, IBM, IOTA Foundation, Mobile Edge X, Obis, Obis, Os, Osisoft, Unisys, and more. So yeah, the, there is a connection between IOTA, um, Dell, and Linux. That's absolutely insane. I know it won't do much to the price. We've, we've gone over that before. Um, the fact is that IOTA, I guess, behind the scenes, while no one's really paying attention to uh, the coin itself and more to focusing on the price, they're actually partnering with major companies just about maybe one or two every single month. This is how often or frequent that we actually hear about IOTA. But yeah, uh, let's move on. Here's another weird one. <clears throat> the Bank of Lithuania announced it will release a digital blockchain-based collector coin in the spring of 2020, according to a press release on the 9th of December. The coin is dedicated to the Act of Independence of Lithuania on the 16th of February, 1918, and its 20 signatories in homage, 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 to the year of the Act. The coin will bear a denomination of 19.18 euros. That's weird. While its size and reform will resemble a credit card, Bank of Lithuania board member Marius Jurgilas said that they chose the theme because of the significant role the act played in Lithuania's history. Blockchain technology will be the layer hosting the 24,000 tokens that the institution plans to release to the public, each featuring one of the act's 20 signatories. The coins will be divided into six categories based on the signatories area of activity with 4,000 coins in each category. Um, without really having to... Um, read much further i'm not sure if this is a test as far as like yeah let's see what we can do let's see if we can do something else after that uh the bank of lithuania is in essence launching their first digital asset i assume they're doing this because it is commemorative in this way of the uh the act of independence but this was uh, so, so 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 i saw this in a couple of places and and the way that it was spoken about was that the Bank of Lithuania was making their own cryptocurrency, but it was going to be limited. And I decided to dig a little bit further, not even that much further. You can find it pretty much on the surface. And it came down to this like a, a, a collector's coin. One of the really weird things, and, and bear with me. I read an article at the beginning of this year. It had to be a while back. And it discussed the future of collectibles and how collectibles would be completely digital. 
within the next 10 to 15 years. People would still value things that are physical, vinyls, art, etc. But we're going to be moving into a more digital form of collection-based type things. And this is where we get the entire idea of non-fungible tokens that you can tell or you can tell exactly uh, which token is which. They are distinctive from one another. Uh, and they were talking about that within the next couple of years, everything. Banks, institutions, companies, even you. Celebrities, that's going to be the really weird part. The, the, the idea is that even celebrities in the future would be able to release their own coins, their own tokens of their likeness. And let's say some famous ex-celebrity ends up launching a coin and they have a million of them. And of those million, 50,000 of them are randomly chosen to have like a digital signature. Those digital coins from the million that they release would be worth more. And then, yeah, it's, so you, you, you kind of get where it's going. <clears throat> There were another other initiatives this year that tried to do it. Uh, let's see if it actually ends up taking off. I'm not sure how 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 keen people will be to collect digital um, collectible things. And even now that I even now that I think that I I think people would would actually be willing to do so. Like I I I play digital card games, and I collect digital cards. So therefore, there's definitely a market for it. Anyway, uh, yeah, no word on if they're going to launch their own uh, digital currency, but apparently they're making a collector's coin. Like I said, it's going to be a very interesting, odd uh, video because a lot of weird news has tumbled out at the exact same time. Here's the actual article right here. The Bank of Lithuania Euro System. It says, world's first digital collector coin to feature signatories of the Act of Independence. And there's it scrolling by right uh, there. Next up. Um, yeah, a lot of companies, there we go. A lot of companies and service providers are rolling out staking support for Tezos. The latest company to do so is Ledger, as its live so software has now lets users stake Tezos. Ledger is best known for providing hardware wallets to customers all over the world. Devices are cheap and extremely powerful, etc., etc. In a recent blog post, the company unveiled how their Ledger Live Toolkit has received a big update. It already has support for 20 th 23 currencies and over 1,000, my gosh, 1,250 ERC-20 tokens. Jeez Louise. The big change is how Ledger Live now supports Tezos as a currency. Furthermore, users can keep their Tezos in their hardware wallet and begin staking coins for extra rewards. By enabling this staking support, Tezos holders can receive rewards by securing the network through a hardware wallet. This is very different from collecting rewards through supporting exchanges. So um, I checked around for the validity of this. It appears to be true, but a lot of it sends you kind of in a loop as far as like the, the information of this actually taking place. It's not unbelievable as this is now what the fifth place that now enables uh, Tezo staking. And I guess this also probably maybe might propel the price even a little bit higher again I'm, I, I think it's now supported by all the major platforms we have ledger i think coinbase definitely has it binance has it and there was another exchange who also announced that they're also um supporting tezo staking uh, it, 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 it it kind of is what it is um i'm wondering what the next coin is going to be <clears throat> with uh, thousands of different coins Maybe 100 that are extremely popular, 30 that are actually in the news, maybe, give or take every now and again. Only one has seemingly dominated the uh, you can now stake with us news. So I assume what the next staking coin will be on all these platforms. I assume Coinbase will roll one out eventually. And then from there, it'll kind of tumble down to Binance and then from Binance to everybody else. But um, yeah, I... You couldn't have told me at the beginning of this year that Tezos would have received such a massive amount of support from different places, especially as it was relatively obscure. I know that you you and your friend knew what Tezos was. I know that I should have known. I know all the stuff people tell me in the comment section. But it's Tezos. No one was talking about Tezos before. So the fact that it's so popular now is uh, it's a bit of a conundrum. Anyway, here's the actual other news. Like I said, it was a bit of a loop. You, you, you kind of just find the stuff that was talking about the other stuff and they kind of link into each other. Um, 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 but, yeah, let's move on. 
Next up, Binance is in the news. The U.S. subsidiary of Binance, known as Binance.us, could, C-O-U-L-D, be listing new cryptocurrencies on its platform, including Tron, and you guessed it, Tezos, NEM, and Ontology, among others. This is according to a recent blog post published by Catherine Coley, the CEO of Binance's U.S. exchange. In a recent blog post explaining what Binance U.S. is currently doing, Coley shared with the community that coins that they are examining to add to their platform, the cryptocurrencies that Binance U.S. is considering to add to their platform are Seller Network, Decreed, Engine Coin, Komodo, Phantom, Icon, IOST, Omisego, Harmony, Ren, Status, Theta, Tomo Chain, and Hedera Hashgraph. Oof. So coins you'll probably never be using in real life. In the blog post, they also explain that they have already listed 19 new tokens in addition to their original seven coins that were included when the platform was launched. Moreover, debit card transfers have been enabled and they have also included ACH limits to 30,000 US dollars. So here's the blog post right here. And then the, wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, we go. The, the, the coins that they are exploring. Sure. I mean, why, why not at this point? Uh, one of the major drivers of the cryptocurrency market, uh, at least as we've seen historically thus far, is the addition of new altcoins to a platform. People will flock to it to buy coins that they don't need in, order to, in hopes of those coins going up in price. I mean, be honest with yourself. How often, how, how, how many of you know these coins? And, 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 and please don't be that one person in the comment section. You know how many times I've gone over, and even, even more so, um, a really big air high five. I'm giving you an actual, my hands are slapping the, slapping the sky. High five to those of you who've been with me for a very long time. Uh, and back me up in the comment section who are like, Nope, he never said that. Nope, I've been with him for two years. Nope, I've definitely seen so and so and so. I've mentioned many times before, there are a lot of coins that are being added to these platforms that you yourself are never, ever, 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 ever going to use. You're never going to use them as a payment. You're never going to send them to your friend. Um, and the main fact that coins will get added to platforms, but that does not mean that you have to buy them and or bet on them. Uh, don't forget, Coinbase and Binance both have tons of coins that go nowhere or have been delisted more so on Binance because Binance has like 800 coins or something like that. Anyway, those are the coins that Binance US is thinking of adding. I guess the really the most significant ones come down to Tron, Tezos, Nim, and Ontology. And even more so, Tezos is kind of shining a bit brighter because every other day we have news about um, a new addition of Tezos and or staking of Tezos on their platform. And one would assume... If Binance US does end up adding Tezos, that within the next couple of weeks after, we would hear about the addition of Tezos staking in Binance US as Coinbase is in the US and they already have Tezos staking. But uh, yeah, uh, let's move on. And to kind of finish things off, the US-based crypto lending platform known as BlockFi says savings accounts... Blah, says savings accounts there we go for litecoin are on the way the company launched this platform with support for bitcoin and ethereum back in march offering a whopping six percent annual interest rate according to blockfi founder zach prince support for litecoin is coming soon so far the company has not announced an official launch date here's the actual tweet right here they pretty much said ltc coming very soon i realized I'm going to do this right after the video. I'm going to research BlockFi as much as possible. I mean, as much as humanly possible. I've been discussing with a number of friends alternative investments when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. <clears throat> I like the idea of staking. I'm leaning more to the idea of, or I feel more comfortable with staking with Ethereum. Though I may be missing an opportunity with Tezos. I know, I understand. I know how the space works. The other part being, if there is a possibility, and I mean the actual legitimacy of BlockFi as a company, as an institution, as a yada yada, in 2016 and 17, we were 
bombarded with companies who said, you give us this, we'll give you three times as much. And they became very, very popular and they all went belly up. They were all scams. This is not indicating that or saying that BlockFi is a scam. It's normally when someone offers you something that seems to be too good to be true, you have to make sure that you really do your due diligence. Because if there is the possibility, and I don't, if anyone remembers, or please to tell me in the comment section, if Coinbase also has a platform like this, I don't think they do as of yet, where they offer like a savings account for the coins that you, I also check that out as well. If there is a possibility for anyone, or rather me and my friends as we were discussing, to be able to buy Bitcoin or Ether, put it into somewhere and get an, an additional 6% of the money that we have on there, I'm going to tell you a very fascinating story. And I, for those of you who, who want to hear it, sit, sit, sit around the digital fire. I remember when I had just turned 18, I remember I was discussing, I think with one of my teachers or something like that, as the school year was over, I was asking him, he was my economic teacher, I was asking him, how do you make money? Not him in particular, but how does one make money? He was saying people usually do it by interest, dividends, and I sat there not understanding exactly what he was talking about, and he said, you know when you go to a bank, and you look on those like pretty pictures, and it says, we offer... Uh, 2% interest. We offer so and so percent interest on the money that you have in your account. He said, there are a lot of people who live off of that interest. I still didn't really get it. This was also around the time. This was many moons ago, many, many moons ago. This was when interest rates, you could still find interest rates of anywhere between three to 6% as things were teetering near the uh, economic collapse. And he, 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 the, okay. The, 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 the long story short of it being, he said, imagine if someone has a million dollars. That million dollars they decide to put into a bank. And let's say for the sake of it, that interest rate on that bank is 6%. So he said, how much do you get at the end of the year from a 6% interest rate with $1 million? You get around $60,000. And he said, do you think you could live off of $60,000 per year? And I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'd be fine with around 5,000 per month. And he said, this is how a lot of rich people um, live their lives. So the discussion that I was having with my friends to kind of bring it on home was if in some scenario, someone of us did accumulate a million dollars worth of crypto and we were able to have a 6% interest rate on that money every single year, not even counting the actual movements in price of that particular coin or should at the end of a year or two year period, that coin has gone up by 38% in value over the course of a two-year period, we would still get that 6% annual interest rate on top of the money that we already had sitting with them. If you had a million dollars in the bank or anywhere and you were able to get 60,000 per year, you'd probably be able to live relatively comfortable off of that. And this is where this has sparked my interest as far as if these things are legitimate. Um, this is why I'm going to check out BlyFi. BlyFly. <laughs> I'm going to check out BlockFi to see if they have the, the uh, and, and, and I mean this in all honesty, to see if they are regulated, to see if they have the actual paperwork. I don't want to give you my money to hold uh, and you're not real. That's not what I'm about. Anyway, I find it quite fascinating because this could open up the doors to a lot of, when you talk about passive income, when you talk about being able to make money on the side, when you talk about being able to buy crypto, wait five years, the prices go up and you hold it in an account somewhere, like even if you had half a million and you were making 30,000 per year, you'd, I mean, you'd be able to pay your rent, pay for food and maybe pay for transport. Maybe the other fun, cool things you may not be able to do, but that's still an extra 30,000 in your account uh, for doing absolutely nothing. Anyway, um, this is probably going to be the future of making money of finance. It's all going to be automated. It's just a matter of uh, platforms coming out that are legitimate because, um, yeah, you understand what I'm trying to say. I, I find this very fascinating because banks right now give you like 1.0.10 uh, annual interest rates. The rate of inflation is anywhere between 1% to 2% or so they say, maybe even a little bit more depending on which country that you're in. 6%, you far out surpass inflation. And also you're accumulating more Bitcoin. That's the kind of the weirdest part as well. This is what really kind of gets me like, where is that extra Bitcoin coming from? I, I know that they would use your stuff to be able to trade and to make profits off of it, and you would get kind of the, the runoff of it. But um, anyway, I guess there's a lot to discuss, but you know what I'm talking about. 
as always, a very special thank you. Go away. To my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Bare Bones Mining, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Morham Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Brady Neals, Woody and Daisy, Triple M and J, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, <laughs> can't read, Crypto Joe, Bankro Network, Adobo, Miluizi, Mechanic, Strange Radio Central, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Cryptopolis, Nicholas Renerth, One Piece, One Love, Damien, Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Rich the Third, Vlad the Impaler, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Paxis, Nick, Mangia, Lavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Garner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch Chest Every Day, and Cow Skips Leg Day, yes, to Crypto, Body Make Boat Face, Sammy Bootshot, Ting Ting, Walla Walla, Bing Bang, Anytime Fitness, Monk's Corner, Staff, and Shoop, Shoop, Diddy Wop, Hummer, Hummer, Wang Dang. Thank you all very, very much for your support. At the moment, the cryptocurrency space, Bitcoin is down. We're still in the same down from just about yesterday. I think it dropped by about 80 US dollars, give or take. Um, Tezos is up once again. That's uh, relatively unsurprising at this point. When you're in the news just about every single day, um, you should be increasing in value. I'm looking at you, Bitcoin. Everything else out there, makers up. Where's IOTA? IOTA's, I mean, IOTA's trending relatively sideways. What were the other big coins? Ontology. Yeah, so I guess all the coins we spoke about, they're seeing some type of movement. NEM, Ontology, uh, Tezos, as far as being added to um, so-and-so. And, and Zcash is also up. Not really sure why, though. Um, mm, 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 mm. I think, was, was, was Holochain also one of the coins that was potentially going to be added? Da, 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 da. There we go. All right, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope that you all have a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. What's today? I never know the actual. Oh, crap. Okay. I thought we were two days behind. Um, thank you all once again for watching and or listening. Um. I forgot where I was. Thank you all once again, and I will talk to you all soon. See you.